Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So, viewer discretion is advised. Oh la la, welcome back to the Phoenix Wright Trials and oh Tribulations my. everybody. <laughs> we are still cross-examining... This guy. In fact, we're only on his second testimony. Yeah, <laughs> that was my fault last time describing the entire plot of Princess and the Frog. <laughs> Not in ten words or less. Not in ten words or less. Anyhow, so this guy's still talking about Zamira. It was Zamira. The, two, the restaurant divided the two halves. <laughs> yes, that's what he said. <laughs> so run this by me again. Because it's been, like, a week since we last recorded yeah. this. Uh, the mirror was here, correct? Which is we. stupid. We? Really? Because I know if I were you, I wouldn't have put a mirror there. It would be in the way. Yeah. Look who's talking, trite. Huh? You're obstructing my view, among other things. Wow. But, but, but... This is my seat in the courtroom! <laughs> Trabian's charm is that it gives you the impression that you're the only customer. Uh... Temporarily placing a mirror in that spot would hardly be in the way. That's totally in the way for every waitress. Unlike you, Trite. Yeah, like, what if you got, like, the little co Not the cart, but, like, you're even just carrying the tray? Even just carrying the tray, like, Unless clearly... that's, like, a really... Fi Unless it's like, oh la la, it's like a football field between the table. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <It> Which was... <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm no. guessing it's like <laughs> half the size of a normal room, maybe. I don't know. What's, Most likely. What's a normal bring it room? Out. <laughs> normal room? Uh, I, I wouldn't know. I can tell you, monsieur, la mirror was there in the middle of la restaurant. Oh, wait, you were doing his voice. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> uh, you said that already. <laughs> there was only one seat in which you could have seen an image of the victim. <laughs> Is that so? And where would that be? Ooh la la, look how you lean towards me! I always attract the younger boys. Maybe I should keep you in suspense a little longer. <laughs> Maybe you're glad you're not reading this. Mr. Armstrong, <laughs> tell the court what you know at once. I attract the older ones too, you know, handsome. Shall I teach you too? Or tease you too? <laughs> uh, everyone's like gonna barf. <laughs> I'm already Where seeing a very hot someone, so I'm afraid you'll be waiting for a long time. Who's Ooh. he dating? Uh, I think I, my, my backstory. Delight. No, my backstory would be um. I can't think of her name. It's driving me nuts. Emma Sky. No. Monica. Cuter. Chick. Francisca. Francisca. Like he's dating. Francisca's no. eight, nineteen. No. Let's say. Well, how old is Godot? We don't know. I don't. We think. still don't know. Okay. He's got enough wit, but he doesn't look that old. I think he's, he's got white hair. Okay, though. I think he's the dude though that like just had white hair super early. Let's assume he's... his beard is not white. Yeah, that I was is... about to say. Let's assume he's under thirty. I mean, that's still not great. Let's assume he's in his twenties or something. There's and no he's way her. he's my age. No, but it... who knows? Maybe that's a wig, and then like later on he'll just be like, yeah, and then like show his true self and what twenty-two-year-old could grow a beard like that? There's lots of people. Link could totally have done that. Not 22. At 22? Yes. No. He had facial hair in like his teens. Not good facial hair. Okay, well, that's decent facial hair. Yeah, also, that's my I have, point. I have a couple friends my age who could grow facial hair that good. Her, your girlfriend? <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyways, enough about Godot's love life. I bet she had a mocha cream skin. I bet she has mocha cream skin and a cappuccino perfume. <laughs> Beyond, I will tell you there is only one seat of which you could have seen. We, we, shut up, tell us. <laughs> that was the seat on the table next to the victim. That was where the old man's sitting. <laughs> so, why can you only see the victim from that particular seat? My monsieur, it is obvious, no? If you look at the plans, you will understand. Not really. The victim would have been reflected in the mirror like so. If you were sitting at the table next to him, you'd see everything known. Ah, there's a bug! Get it away! Sorry. <laughs> I literally just... Okay, no. You see the side of my face? I have like a bug bite or something. And it's driving me nuts. That's not a bug bite. Yes, it is! What is it then? A freckle. This? A pimple. 
No, it's not. The beginnings of a pimple. That is not a pimple. I asked mom and she was like, mm, it looks like a bug bite. So, yeah, I'm really mad about <laughs> bugs today. So that's the seed old CD was sitting in the other day. When the poisoning happened. The old man was sitting at the table next to the victim? Why does that seem kind of odd? Everything's odd about this game. We're literally talking to a dude? <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> After the terrible incident occurred, I moved La Mere so it was not in the way. He's a dude. Did you move the mirror while Mr. Kudo was off calling the police? We. Oui. Exactement. I carried it out of the restaurant, Zen. That is against the... Why? You're supposed to keep everything the same. People don't give a rip. People lie on the state commit perjury. It's like, oh, well, that's okay. As okay. long as you tell the truth no, eventually. What I'm saying, though, is that when we were in, like, case two of the first game and they left T-Bone steaks out for a that week. That was case three. That was case three. Okay, they left T-Bone steaks out for a week. <laughs> There's they bugs knew everywhere. Was up. The bugs were everywhere, but they were like, no, we gotta do this. And it was super important. We didn't touch anything. This guy's like, I'm just going to move the biggest beer out of here. <laughs> okay, well, Penny had a lot more sense than this mm. guy. No, but Penny wasn't the only one. Like, everyone in, like, when the police showed up, they well, were the like... Well, the characters get crazier in every game. They do. No, <laughs> the police, they were like, okay, Penny, don't move anything. She's like, okay. Then everyone else was like... Okay, we won't move anything. We'll just let the food rot. <laughs> <laughs> and then it did. You, you moved a huge mirror like that all by yourself? What can I say? I know how to pick things up, handsome. <laughs> I thought he was going to be like, the big, strong muscles. Not like talking like that, but like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> that would be funny if he broke down and talked like that. Godot actually laughed at something? Well, given the witness's physique, I suppose it is possible. Did you move anything else from the crime scene, Mr. Armstrong? I look at the ob obligating? Obliging. Obliging. Oh, I don't say that word very often. I look like the obliging type known. <laughs> but naturally, I did not touch anything else. Really? What about the medicine? Are you sure about moved that? Moved it. I touch nothing except Lemire. See, this is what should happen. Cyclox should appear in court. That would make it too easy, though. That would make it too easy, but, like, what's the explanation for, like, oh, the magic, um... Magatama? Magatama doesn't work in the courtroom. <laughs> maybe the witness stand is too far away for us to see. Maybe. Or maybe they're like, hey, remove the weird, like, thing from your pockets. Right. <laughs> what the heck is that? Is that is voodoo? <laughs> no. Voodoo? Are you going to be enchanting people? <laughs> Mr. Wright, is there something the witnesses said that doesn't match the crime scene? Yeah, there is. I just can't put my finger on what exactly. What do you mean, Phoenix? Ha! Suffering from a case of heartburn, Trite? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I have just the thing for that! An oil with golden mirror and frankincense! Frankenstein's. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> he mispronounced it. Oh. Add a few drops to your coffee, and voila, enjoy. Focus, Phoenix. Breathe. I just need to ignore those two, and I just need to find some evidence. It is pretty strange, though, isn't it? I mean, nobody mentioned anything about a really large mirror. You'd think somebody would've, but Maggie didn't, and neither did old CD. Then the only logical explanation <coughs> is that there was no mirror inside Trabion that day. Yeah. Now I've just got to prove it, somehow. Okay, well, we already know he moved something else, because he literally moved the medication from table to the kitchen. But I don't know how else we could do, like, prove the mirror, so I think the best course of action is to prove that he moved something else first. Okay. So this was found in the kitchen, and that was his ear cream, so you think yeah. he touched that? Ah. This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, Your Honor. Uh, how exactly is that possible? Well, um... Excuse me while I time travel a bit. <laughs> okay. So he said he's sitting next to the victim. The middle mirror, of the restaurant. Mirror divided, divided it into two halves. Okay, wouldn't the mirror... 
still not work. Okay, I'm trying to think of mirror physics. If you have a mirror and it reflects the two sides and somebody's sitting here, wouldn't it reflect to where he's sitting? And then you wouldn't be able to see... It, mirror physics can get a little weird. But if, if there's a mirror that's like horizontally, uh, it's parallel yeah. to where you're sitting. Right. And, but it's in front of you and you look at it, the light would kind of bend it on a diagonal and it would show you the reflection ahead of you. So he is correct. Okay, it would work. It would work if the if Victor Kudo was sitting there. Would was it make, Victor Kudo would it sitting make there, a though? difference if he was sitting in one seat over there versus a different seat over there? It would give a different reflection. So if he was sitting I mean, he'd probably get at least a bit of a view of the victim from either seat, but the one on the far end would give him a better view. It could be that there was a mirror then because nobody has been able to see the other guy. And so maybe when he had a reflection in the mirror, it's like, well, it's only showing one dude. It's not showing the other. But that doesn't make but sense because Maggie sense. would have pointed that out. Like, yeah, I passed out and then the mirror vaporized. The ball appears to have vaporized. vaporized. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, okay. It's... Uh, we should have done this testimony last time. Yeah, we should have. <laughs> right after his first testimony, it's pretty obvious. But if it's been a week, then you might not get it right away. <laughs> okay, let me look through the evidence. Okay. Next to where the old man was sitting. So looking at the floor plans. Old man's. So that's, that's that him. seat is upper right is yep. where uh, Glen Elg was sitting. They're saying Victor Kudo was upper left. Sure. Well, we already wouldn't he have seen the um, Maggie though from like at least the side view. He wouldn't have been able to see her from behind. Well, if Maggie came out of the kitchen and walked towards him, yeah, he totally would have been able to see her from behind. But I'm saying he would have been able to see her from the side as well. Yeah, but he wasn't focusing okay. on her face. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I'm saying the side creepy. you'd see some more. Anyway, back. So there's that, uh, nope. the autopsy, crime photo. It doesn't show a mirror, which makes me think... But but this was taken this after he after... supposedly <laughs> cut it off to the dump. Yep, okay, back. <laughs> Coffee cup. cup, victim's lottery ticket, right. the apron... apron. Potassium cyanide, the prescription bag, Glenn's calendar. Wouldn't it be really dumb if it's just like, oh, the mirror wouldn't have been there because there would have been like ketchup and coffee all over it for one back he's No, it, stuff. it wouldn't be that. Oh, uh, apparently he is a really big fan of the horse races, especially the Harvestman 64 ones where you always win. <laughs> yeah, those are great. <laughs> okay. badge. Yeah, I feel dumb for not knowing this immediately. Box, the papers, the... The mag boxes... Plural, small, lunch special, scooter, Chorky, the you need a scooter. scooter. <laughs> hey, Chorky. Um, dang it. You don't know? No. Is it just that I broke the- what? Your Honor, Mr. Kudo's words yesterday strongly contradict Mr. Armstrong's testimony. Oh, is it because of the crime photo with the face not broken? Yeah. Oh. This is the letter of apology that was written by Mr. Kudo, is it not? Yeah. I realize it looks useless, Your Honor, but this is still testimony. Ha. I guess useless people are only really good at identifying useless things. Wow, Gado. He's terrible. Takes one to know one. <laughs> <laughs> what relevance does this scrap of paper have to the trial, Mr. Wright? Mr. Kudo's testimony is actually very relevant to the question at hand, Your Honor. <laughs> no one can see you doing the weird dance moves. That's okay. It very it's clearly contradicts this piece of evidence. This guy's scooter. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, Your Honor. Well, I'm not sure the contradiction is as clear as you would have us believe, Mr. Wright. Oh, <laughs> perhaps you should reconsider it before you try again, hmm? Try again? You mean I was wrong? <laughs> oh, man. I do like getting stuff wrong in this, because it's kind of funny. It is funny. Um... Yeah, because if you look in the crime photo, that vase is not broken at that table. Mm -hmm. And there's only one vase per table. Yep. Cool. This piece of evidence contradicts with testimony we have heard, Your Honor. The crime photo? Yes, this photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? Should not exist? Ha, sounds like you're describing yourself, Trite. 
very funny. No, nah, not really. He's just being a jerk. Yeah. Now then, if saying. the defense would please clarify its statement. People just like him because the fangirls find him hot and he's got a cool theme. Oh my gosh, he has a cool theme and he likes to drink coffee. I like to drink coffee too. We're so we must be we soulmates. soulmates. <laughs> I don't like coffee at all. I like coffee Is flavored. That? I like coffee flavored ice cream. This is what should not be the picture. Why did they not cart him off to like they get the autopsy <laughs> before taking the picture? I'm sorry. I'm afraid you've lost me. Um, ha. I suppose it's up to me to clarify the defense's claim. The something that shouldn't exist is clearly. Wait, 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 wait! I've changed my mind. You're... I've changed my mind, Your Honor. <laughs> I have become changed my mind. <laughs> the last thing I need right now is a scalding hot coffee shower. <laughs> nice. Very well. Gather your thoughts, Mr. Wright. Yeah, obviously. Would that work? Oh, that does work. There's one thing that was clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Kudo broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. And yet, as the court can see, there is an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Why? Because Mr. Kudo was not, in fact, sitting at the table next to the victim at all. Don't be an idiot, Trite. That's impossible. That seat's the only one Kudo could have seen the victim's reflection from. Exactly! <laughs> exactly! There's only one conclusion we can draw from this contradiction. There was no mirror in the Tra Beyond that day. Watch, it's gonna be like, I moved it in the morning! <laughs> That would, that would, that also doesn't work, because then it wouldn't be there for him to see. Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. Mon dieu! Don't try to confuse the court, Trite. Obviously, the witness cleaned up the vase while the police were taking their time getting to the crime scene. He ran out of there! Unfortunately, Mr. Godot, that doesn't quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary. In his own words, I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Ugh. Ugh. Ah! <laughs> well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> I was right. There was no mirror in the restaurant that day. In light of this revelation, we return back to the original problem. Why did the victim have an earpiece in an ear in which he couldn't hear? Ha! You only get one shot in life. There's no turning back. If you want to claim that the mirror wasn't there, Trite, then this problem is all yours. How do you explain what the old man saw? I think the guy was just crazy. If I can answer this, then I'll be that much closer to the truth. I can feel it. Are you going to be okay? Can you really solve this contradiction, Nick? There's more than just this one contradiction, Maya. What do you mean? Remember what Maggie told us? There was another man at the victim's table. And there was a sample CD on the victim's table. It all flies in the face of Mr. Kudo's testimony. And I think I know the reason why nothing in this case is adding up. Do you now? I don't well, know. Well, Mr. Wright, let's hear your answer. Yes, Your Honor. The reason behind all of the contradictions in Mr. Kudo's testimony is simple. Mr. Kudo made a mistake, the ear doctor made a mistake, the victim was a phony. What's that supposed to mean? The victim's a phony? Is it like, he was just a stunt double? He, what? Someone was uh, stealing someone, his identity. Someone <laughs> made an inflatable version of him and put him in the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and he drank coffee. Maybe everyone was really, had really bad eyesight. <laughs> And Maggie was hallucinating, talking with him and taking his order. Yep, yep. And somehow the coffee drank itself and left the lit mark behind on it. Yep. And, and no. the autopsy guys didn't notice that it was an inflatable. That damage. would not be a surprise, though. The autopsy people are kind of terrible sometimes. No, they're reliable. Oh, we found a new updated autopsy that That's, finally... That was Edgeworth. That finally has the bones. <laughs> we forgot to check his bones. That never happened. <laughs> Probably not, but I feel like that would happen. Um, so you think Mr. Kudo was just crazy? I don't... Mm, no, I think the dude was crazy. I think he was like... Eh, oh, yeah. I want the movie to die! <laughs> yeah. well, I, that, I'm the happy pills. <laughs> although, and not only that, I think it's more like... <sighs> how did he get his ear injury again? Um, He got beat up. That all? Someone punched him in the ear. 
Oh. Okay. I was like, if he if it was something more serious, I was like, maybe he faked the injury, managed to get prescriptions, and then like tried <laughs> to use that, but I don't think so. The ear doctor made a mistake. <laughs> That's probably not the right probably one. Probably not. <laughs> so let's just get this one out of the way. I believe we're looking at this the wrong way. It was actually the doctor's mistake. What? Yes, the doctor got the wrong ear. He's a doctor, right? Well, I believe we saw an autopsy report yesterday. One that stated the victim's left eardrum was ruptured and had medicine in it. I'm beginning to wonder if it's not your eardrum that's ruptured, Mr. Wright. This is no time to be playing with people's perceptions, Nick! Uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I, I was the one who made a mistake. Yeah. Well then, we'll declare the guilty verdict now, I guess. <laughs> Think more carefully this time. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. Kudo made a mistake. If the victim was a phony... That's so vague. It's so vague. <laughs> and, yeah, is it like, oh, the dude... I mean, obviously the, the two dudes were in cahoots. Uh, Xeniope and, um... <laughs> The the victim. I can't remember his name. Glenn Pure programming Elg. guy. Okay. Elg. Glenn Elg, Elg. and Zeniope. They were definitely <laughs> in cahoots. So, but what does phony mean? Does it mean, like, what I thought originally? Like, oh, he was an inflatable or something. He's not an inflatable, Marty. <laughs> no, no, what I'm saying is, is it like somebody has his identity, and then he's, like, locked up in a closet somewhere? <laughs> or is it, yeah. like, what's... I don't even... I, I think Mr. Kudo made the mistake. Clearly, Mr. Kudo made a mistake. Mr. Trite, you're the one who brought up all these contradictions. And? If you're trying to tell us the old man just made a mistake, we can wrap up this case right now with a guilty verdict. That's true. How about it, Mr. Wright? Should I just declare your client guilty? Is that the best thing you can come up with, Nick? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Your Honor. A phony? What is that supposed to mean? Well, you'll find out. <sighs> this is dumb. This case is riddled with contradictions. Yet, there is one very simple answer that clears them all up. Uh, and what is that? The incident Mr. Kudo witnessed and the incident the victim experienced were two completely different events. What? Yes, the victim that Mr. Kudo saw wasn't Mr. Glenn Elg at all. It was an imposter, a phony pretending to be Mr. Elg. Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the imposter's left eardrum. That's how he ended up wearing the earpiece in his left ear by mistake. <laughs> I was waiting for that. This doesn't... This doesn't Order! Sense. Order in the court! Settle down or I'll clear the courtroom! Quiet, Gramps. Why don't you get out of here, huh? What, what did you say?! <laughs> Trite, are you saying that what Mr. Kudo saw was a setup? You cannot get away with that! <laughs> get him out of there! <laughs> Throw him in jail! <laughs> Throw the book at him! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Literally. Whip him! Yeah, where's Franziska and her whip where you need her? Yes. Someone pretended to be a Glen Elg and acted out the whole coffee poisoning. So All for the express purpose of creating a witness out of one Mr. Victor Kudo. No, what are you doing? Move ahead. It's not too late. Oh. So whip it. <laughs> whip it good. Get real. I thought you were doing like an anime theme song or something. No. <laughs> Get real trite. Why would anyone want to do that? When is any anime song in English? That's true. <laughs> Isn't it obvious? The thing Mr. Kudo was most insistent about was in his testimony was... The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it! That's the serving girl right there in the defendant's chair! I remember her well! Uh, it's so hard to believe, but... Yeah, I don't believe it. There was one and only one reason to show Mr. Kudo this fake poisoning. To show Maggie Bird in the act of poisoning the coffee. Are you insinuating that the waitress in the old man's story was a fake as well? It's true that there was no other customers in the restaurant at the time, but... It's also true that the chef was there. He would have noticed what was happening. That's right. Well, witness? He was under everybody's, like, Oh, I have debt! Oh, I have to oblige to Zinio! <laughs> like, every... We 
I literally <laughs> saw him try to beat us up. I think that's the thing that drives me the most nuts about these games, where it's like, Phoenix Wright's like, I've you. got the evidence I, of I've got you the in evidence, prison. And I'm like, waving it in your face, and then they're like, oh yeah, well. And then they just either beat him up, or taser yep. him, or get the mafia to go tase, after him. Marty. Okay. If it's a verb, it's just <laughs> taser. <laughs> Not tase him. Have the mafia come after him. There was the, like, red, white, blue dude. Yep. Can't remember what he did. Um, he, he put us, us in out. jail and tried to pin the murder on us. <laughs> did he put us in jail? Yeah. I don't remember that. Okay, well, <laughs> everyone has just been like, oh yeah, Phoenix, right? What you gonna do? <laughs> the thing that bothers me the most about this case is how anyone could be fooled that Zinni Ope was Phoenix. Oh yeah. That makes zero sense. That too. And then also like, you know, if you have the mafia jump on you, you could be like, hey, guess what, police? The mafia jumped me, and they're like, oh. Well, nothing we can do. <laughs> nothing we can do about that. I'm like, why? If your restaurant really was the scene of such theatrics, you would have known about it, correct? Ooh la la. This is the most difficult for me. No, it's quite simple. All you have to do is testify. You are under oath, after all. Was there, in fact, a phony at Trabian that day? The defense demands that Mr. Armstrong tell us the whole truth about what happened. Ooh la la. Mon dieu. Mon dieu. <laughs> the defense's request for additional testimony is accepted. You will accurately explain in detail the events in the restaurant that day. Oh, oui. Uh... <laughs> now he's just <laughs> please let this go away. <laughs> in the restaurant. He's like, she loves me, she loves me not. <laughs> like throwing yeah, the petals off. The victim, Monsieur Elk, came to my restaurant alone. I remember the old man arrived not long after him. There were no other customers. When he got word he won the lottery, Mon Elk became very excited. It was approximately five minutes later the poisoning incident occurred. You're not telling us anything! No, there was no time for a phony to do the acting. Yeah, that, no, that, that, that doesn't tell us anything. <laughs> Just so we're clear, there was no mirror in the restaurant after all. The vous de mat, pardon. Forgive me, your honor. I lied because I wanted this mess to be cleared up quickly. That's <laughs> a terrible reason to lie! That literally does the opposite. What you have just done is commit perjury, Mr. Armstrong. I will decide how to punish you later. Good. Spoiler alert, he decides no punishment. <laughs> we. For now, we will hear your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. See, none of, none of these real judges would stand for this. It would be like, oh, you committed perjury? Well, your testimony's now garbage and we can't trust it. Throw them out. Yeah. <laughs> hmm, he took that perjury charge a bit too well. Yeah, he knows he's not going to get anything from it. <laughs> but I'm guessing he'll be in more serious trouble after this cross-examination. Please don't cross-examine me. <laughs> My stomach feels bad. He would. <laughs> Maybe it's that lobster you ate! It wasn't lobster. Uh-huh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> was he alone at his table as well? My oi? My oi? May we? May we? Yeah, may we. I don't know French! I've told you, Marty, if you can't pronounce the may French we? words, just pronounce as few syllables as possible. <laughs> okay. May we? I saw him from the kitchen. Yet the defendant, Miss Bird, remembers it differently. She swears there was another man at the victim's table. Still, may we? I don't know that. Everybody knows may we. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, Trite, yesterday's witness also testified that the victim was alone. You know, seeing you squirm like that reminds me of a certain coffee's bittersweet bite. What kind of coffee has he been drinking? <laughs> yeah. It's not coffee, it's love! It's love that's bittersweet! Hearing Maya say that makes her seem almost wise all of a sudden. The old, old man, man arrived. Man. This is basically just like, guess what? I'm saying all the same stuff. By old man, you mean Victor Kudo, correct? Oui, he comes often for my special coffee. I drank your coffee once, Mr. Armstrong. It's special, I'll give you that. It's worth a sip just for the experience. Oh, you make me so happy, Monsieur. You are most welcome anytime. I said it was worth one sip and nothing more. So, Miss old Mr. Kudo arrived at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Yeah, because remember, Kudo was there getting the coffee. He's like, this is the worst coffee, coffee I've, I've ever, ever had. had. <laughs> Maybe I should ask about Kudo's worst coffee in more detail. <laughs> yeah. Wait, so his arrival, how many minutes after what time was it? 
Either one would be good. And I think we can look at both. Yeah, we can. All I need to do is establish that this phony victim really existed. Asking more about the old man is only going to cloud the issue. I think that's enough about coffee. Please continue with your testimony, Mr. Armstrong. You are welcome anytime to a Monsieur right? I'll brew something special for you. Yeah, I don't want something special. Yeah, we already had your special and it was gross. So you're saying that not much time elapsed between when the victim and Mr. Kudo arrived? Oui, is that is correct. But that still leaves the possibility that something happened in that gap of time. And by your recollection, how much time would you say elapsed? Let me see. Approximately two minutes. Two minutes?! It's possible. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Hey, I'd like a table. Da -da 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 -da. I'd like a table. Like that. That's so <laughs> That's crazy. not Kudo's voice. I want the table, you brat. <laughs> I don't have a good old man voice. <laughs> no, you do. It's just not the Kudo one. I'm an old man. Yeah, I've got that. Uh, uh, I have a good old like woman like Cammy Koopa. The Cammy Koopa voice. <laughs> Two minutes? That's all? Hmm, it seems unlikely that anything untoward could have happened in such a short wow. time. <laughs> Rats! I knew I shouldn't have pursued this line of questioning. Rats! Okay. <laughs> Charlie Brown yeah. saying if that. If there's ever great. another time where we have an old man who's not completely crazy, let me voice him because I could just be like, I remember back in my day, we had the old noodle. What was it, or what was it called? The wet noodle. The wet noodle. The wet noodle. I could, I could do that. I'm not sure if there is such an old man. <laughs> yeah, everyone's crazy. Except out, for Penny. Out of curiosity, about what time was it when Mr. Kudo arrived? Even Penny, though, she was still obsessed with the trading card. Ah, I, I need to try! <laughs> and she, like, passes out. Yeah, she's pretty weird, too. Oh, yeah, she passes out <laughs> if you don't trade with her. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, no. I cannot remember, Monsieur. You just told me two minutes. No, no, no. It's what time was it when they arrived, not oh. how much time. Hmm, I believe we were told by a witness yesterday. The crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. Does that perhaps jog your memory, witness? The incident happened about 20 minutes after he arrived. So the victim must have arrived between 2 p.m. and 2.10 p.m., no? Uh, 2 of hmm. 5, actually. Just after 2, huh? Thank you for your help for jogging my memory, monsieur. You are wonderful! Ha ha ha! I can't sit here all the time and do nothing now, can I? <laughs> the time of day will be added to the witness's testimony. We oui, monsieur judge! Everything I do, I do for you! That's creepy! <laughs> Merci bien! That's French, isn't it? Ha ha ha! I'm glad at least one person is in a good mood. It, he's even humming a song to himself. <laughs> I want to know what song the judge is humming. Oh, I thought Armstrong was humming this song. Oh, I thought that- no, it's the judge, I think. <laughs> he made a theme song for his restaurant? He absolutely would. It's true. He La would do like a poem. Because he had the poetry The book. land of eclairs. <laughs> you don't have no eclairs there. It'll be that good. They're trying to be friends. A no. vegan lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Which is gross. It's like yeah. made of tofu and tapioca, I think. Maybe, ah! Wait, maybe not tapioca. I was no, about to no, say no. tapioca. <laughs> All I can do is tapioca from the jungle. Yeah. <laughs> Ew! Tapioca pudding is gross. Are you absolutely sure tapioca pudding is gross? <laughs> when I really think hard, I am sure it was just after two. And tapioca and pudding is, is gross. really gross. <laughs> it is that time. Oh wait, sorry. It is that time. You can stop. You can sing. Okay. Sing. It, it, is, sing. it is that time. It is that time. time. I'm I'm right. Stop saying the lights, <laughs> man. You. Ooh. You're quite right. I always break into song when the restaurants are serving their specials, too. <laughs> I've been known to wind up a case early just to make it on time. Haha. <laughs> what? I guess you should never get between a hungry judge and his own- Wait! You know what? I don't care! I need a guilty verdict so I can go to my spot! <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Well, this explains why Angel Star was able to bribe him with food. That's true. Oh, would you look at that? It's almost lunchtime already. <laughs> Witness, get on with your testimony, please! 